So today I want to talk about the holy trinity of music. I can go a mile a minute, I told you to get out of my way. All the way. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt Steinfeld and today I want to talk about the holy trinity of music. And the reason I call it that, it's, it's, it's for the musical artists, the three most important things that you and I could be doing in order to establish and build a, a music career to where you're earning a living, you're, you're making enough through your shows, through your music, through your merchandise in order to make a living, in order to keep doing what you're doing. Okay, so I've been thinking about this more as I've been playing more live and having more opportunities to play in front of people it's uh, given me a little bit of better perspective of what I need to be doing in order to push forward in terms of um, reaching a better audience, a higher, a, a broader audience, uh, finding people that are interested in my music. So the first one, the first of the three is songwriting. And of course, in order to make music, you need to have songs. Now, I know a lot of popular artists don't write their own songs. Uh, people like Ariana Grande or sometimes even Taylor Swift, people like that. Singers, uh, especially pop artists, usually don't write their music. And, and a lot of country stars co-write. I mean, their names are on there as songwriters, but they're in the room with a couple other people who are doing the heavy lifting. Hip-hop's. Uh, probably a little bit different, old school hip hop, you know, people are, are writing their own lyrics, people like Jada Kiss or whatnot. But I, I would I would I would think a lot of the the songwriting and the melody making is done by producers and beat makers and whatnot. But regardless, you have to have songwriting. Whether that's you or someone else or someone you know, you have to write good songs. It starts with the song. All music starts with the song. Uh, and you know, there's debate about this. What is good music, right? It's it, it's subjective. It's at least got to be catchy. Now, something that I've become more aware of as I've written my own songs is that there is a difference between a hit song and let's say like a concept song or a song where uh, you want to really say a particular message. Now, obviously, we want to all write hits. We all want to write number one songs that are on the radio and go viral and people love them. But if you look at the songs that go viral and the songs that get the most airplay, they're not really the most d meaningful songs. They're not that deep. They don't carry much of a message, right? If you think of a, song, a classic hit, hit song like Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, if you look at the lyrics, it really doesn't make much sense. It's just really super vague. This girl thinks I'm I'm the father for her, her, her child. We went to this place. They made her dance. I had to dance to defend her. It's like it doesn't it doesn't really follow a, a, a typical storyline. It, it it in fact most of Michael Jackson's songs don't make any sense if you if you look at the lyrics. Um. So in terms of songwriting, you 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 kind of have to focus on what you want to do. If you want to if you want to be like a vocal piece of like a movement, or you're trying to get get people to see something, a deeper message. Like if you're trying to be like Bob Dylan in the '60s or something, um, that's that needs to be you know your decision. That needs to be something that you you're thinking about because if you're just wanting to make hits that are on the radio and kids and teenagers dance to, um, that's a whole nother beast. Songwriting it's important. A song is not just a song. It, you have to decide what type of song it is in order to you know push that song towards certain things. If you want to play it live, like some of my songs. Uh, I like, I, you know, obviously I like the songs that I write, but some of the songs that I write aren't even good to play live in front of people if it's just uh, me on guitar. If, if, it, if it's a full band, that's another story. Each song has a home. And the more and more you write, the more and more you'll realize what kind of thing you do best. And it's important to understand that that all... Even in today's overproduced, kind of drag and click into the DAW stuff, type production and music writing, song making, it seems more and more kind of call it in, you know, 
paint by numbers type thing. It's important you you figure out what you want to do with the song. Cuz just say, "Oh, I want to I want to make hits." Okay, well that that means something totally different than I want to write like, like like deep, you know, passionate feelings or I want to write a message or or uh, you know, something that that causes people to stop and think about their lives. So songwriting. Songwriting is the first thing of the three of the holy trinity. The second is recording. Now, I I used to live uh, in Eastern Europe for several years, and I didn't have a lot of access to other songwriters, at least in English, and I didn't have access to a lot of, of uh, opportunities to play in front of people, but I've, I, 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 I really got used to recording. I got comfortable recording. One of the reasons is, is doing the audio for this YouTube channel. Another reason uh, was doing vocals for hip-hop early on, doing vocals for other people, producing for other people, recording my own live sets for YouTube, and that would eventually go into Spotify. When you have to you have to actively pursue these three things because they're all different. You know, you could say, oh, I make music. Well, what are you good at? Are you good at recording? Are you good at songwriting? Because the first two are different. They're very, very different. You may not be good at recording. You may need to find a studio. You may need to do a, lo- a bunch of research like I did on YouTube and then buy a cheap studio and then upgrade as you go and figure out what you need as you need it. Recording is very different from songwriting. Uh, as you know, there's you know engineers and people that work at studios that may not be good musicians or artists or songwriters, but they're great at recording. They're great at at knowing how to document uh, these creations. So as an independent artist, you're going to need to figure out how to record. Or you're going to have to find a way to fund uh, your time in the studio to get a professional to record you. And it's completely okay to start at the very basic, and that is just to start with your phone, to record on your phone, and to figure out how you sound when you are recorded and to figure out the best way to capture that sound because you're unique, you're a unique voice, you're a unique person. Your instrumentation's unique and your room that you record in is unique and your environment's unique. So there's plenty of things that have gone on to bigger audiences that have been recorded on minimal uh, you know, equipment and that's okay. I started with very cheap equipment and I gradually changed that over time as I saw needs and uh, as the money came in in other ways. Not through music, but through saving. Recording is a, is a really good way to get ahead of other people. Now, I know a ton of, I know a ton of good musicians, guys on guitar that are just amazing, uh, ladies or whoever that can play piano. Um, I even know really good songwriters, but if they don't know how to record and they don't have access to a studio or access to the means to record, then really it doesn't matter because no one will ever hear it. I've talked to several people through this YouTube channel that have left comments. I got all this music, but it's not out on, it's not recorded. It's not on, obviously it's not on Spotify. It's not on Apple music and whatnot. If you don't record and you don't record well, no one will ever hear your music except uh, if you happen to play in front of other people. Recording is so important. Over the COVID lockdown, I recorded three albums and put those out within that year and a half. And I noticed that even though I felt really productive in my studio, right, in in the studio, um, it it gave me a sense of a feasible project that was achievable. Like when I finished the album, I felt like I accomplished something. It was very very tangible, something that I I started, something that I finished, and it allowed me to say, okay, I made a step forward. If you write a bunch of songs and they don't get out anywhere, it's really hard to have a sense of accomplishment or have a sense of of something that you've done that has been completed. 
Uh, this this leads to the third thing of the holy trinity of music for the independent artist, and that is playing live. When I was living in the other country, working on um, you know my my recording and songwriting, one thing that I was really afraid of is playing live. And if you've noticed anybody that gets famous quick, they are thrusted into the spotlight because they're famous now. And these people often will, will perform, and it's awful. Because it's really easy to record and sound good in the studio if you have all the time in the world to record, you know, 100 vocal takes. And if you have, like, auto-tone and other things that are, that are in the production process that are helping you sound good, it's really hard to get your craft going live, playing live, feeling comfortable. I've talked about this in another video about playing at my first festival going through sound check knowing which songs of yours sound the best live which ones not to play which ones are not good in an acoustic setting which ones are not good at like uh if you're in a coffee shop right you're not going to want to play this really loud rock anthem if you're in an arena playing to a bunch of people and, and you and you want to get them hyped up you don't play super song sappy ballads Figuring out all these things takes experience and it takes knowing what to do based on what you have experienced yourself. So it's really, really important to figure this out. It's really, really important to book yourself. If you're an independent artist, you probably don't have an agent. You probably don't have a marketer. You don't have a promoter. You don't have a manager. That's fine. You don't need one yet. If you're not playing shows, you don't need one. But how do you start playing shows? Well, one thing that I've done is since I've moved back to the States is I've started to call all the live venues. Now, what I've noticed is that there's a big difference between certain venues. Venues are often worried about the bottom line, meaning how much money they're going to make. They ask you, they, they say, how many Spotify numbers do you have? Not, look, send me your Spotify links. Not because they care about the music, but they care about how many followers I have. They care about how many followers you have on Instagram. It's very, very petty. It's like, it's like middle school. They want to pick the cutest girl and get, date the cutest girl or the cutest guy because they want to be popular. They want to make the most money. They want to get the most feedback and the most you know return on their money because they're going to pay you. So if you can't get 60 people, 70 people, 100 people to come in and buy drinks and buy food and buy tickets, it's not worth it to hire you. So how do you get a place if, if it's all based on reputation and on what, you, what numbers you can pull, then you need to figure a way to play in order to get you an in through someone else. So maybe it's, it's good to play an open mic. Maybe it's good to play with a friend who is doing a show. Ask if you can open for them. S develop relationships find out who the booker is and if you have good enough music on the on the spotify's and then on the amazons and on the apples you can convince them that you're good enough to play even if you don't have a history of playing live what the point is is you need to find we need to find ways to play in front of people that are low risk that get us confidence get us experience doing what we do live and then as we build these relationships, as we build local pockets of interest, then we can maybe collaborate with some other artists and put on a show together or a showcase or a songwriters round. Or you may have such a successful open mic or, 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 or develop such a relationship with that venue at the open mics that they invite you to do a set of your own on another night. Playing live is essential. So many people, especially in hip hop, especially in hip hop, people get into the studio, they write good songs, they focus on their verses, they focus on their beats, and then they suck live. They cannot play live because either they're afraid or they don't have the courage to, 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 to network to get involved with local venues, and that's a big mistake. These three are very, very different. Songwriting, recording, and playing live you're probably going to be better at one of these. You're probably going to be better at recording or you're probably going to be better at writing songs and you don't necessarily want to be in front of people. I know a ton of musicians who are amazing on tape, but they can't play live because they're so scared. 
And then you have these people that are that are just kind of naturally charismatic and they, they love to be in front of the camera. They love to be in, on the stage, but they're not good songwriters or they're not good musicians or they're not good at recording. They don't know what they're doing in the studio, but when you put them on a stage, they know exactly what to do. You see, it's important to figure out what you're good at and if you're not good at one of these things or if you feel uncomfortable about one of these things it reveals where you or i need to focus and practice see for me i got so used to songwriting and recording and putting out music i didn't even when i when it came time for me to play live i was so scared i had to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse which is normal but i felt that i need to rehearse even more just to feel comfortable playing the songs that I had written. I would written so many songs that I didn't know my own songs. It's weird to say that, but when I recorded them, I was reading them off the page. I was looking at the sheet music. Figure out what's your, what, what your weakness is. If you're trying to make a successful artist career, and I don't mean being on MTV, I don't mean being on the top 100, I don't mean you know being number one on Apple iTunes or, or Spotify. I'm talking about just making enough money in order to make more music, in order to quit your job. You have to be able to write good music. You have to be able to record somehow, and you have to be able to play live, or it's not going to work. And I know that there's some people in the comments that are like, well, so-and-so didn't play live or so-and-so didn't have uh, their own access to a studio or so-and-so just made a beat and they went viral or so-and-so, you know, the story goes on and on. Yes, there are exceptions, but most of those people are anomalies. Most of those people are, are like lightning striking twice in the same place. It's just rare, and yes, there's examples of that, but that's not usually how it works, and the thousand people that watch this YouTube channel, that's probably not going to work for all of us. It may happen to one of us, but that's not normal. What's normal is focusing on these three things and getting good at them. So let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. I always appreciate uh, the ideas and the stuff that are shared there. So let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, and we will see you again next time. All the way up on the music dial.